back to the amateur radio technician license course. You know, there's more to amateur radio than just uh, voice and Morse code uh, transmissions. Uh, for decades, amateur operators have been pushing the bounds of communications, improving uh, communication techniques. Um, with today's digital signal processors, even weak signals can be detected and information can be extracted or retrieved from them. Um, inexpensive computers and microcontrollers can be used to communicate over great distances uh, using as little as uh, one one hundredth of a watt of uh, power using digital modes. Um, even cell phones can be repurposed into uh, using uh, you know, digital uh, modes and, and techniques. Um, signals can also be bounced off the moon and even planets and received uh, by anyone on Earth that uh, is in line of sight with that celestial object. And while I can't predict the future, I can predict that if you pass this exam uh, and becoming licensed, uh, you will have the tools needed to join in pushing these limits and being uh, a part of such great experiments. Anyway, are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is Lesson 8, Part 1. I'm Gary Stevens, KE2GS, your instructor. In this section, we're going to be talking about uh, modulation modes. There are four exam questions out of the four groups. Uh, the this information contained in this section is amateur satellite operations, operating uh, activities, non-voice and digital communications. We'll start off with uh, modulation modes, uh, particularly bandwidth uh, various signals and the choice of emission types. Simply put, the more bandwidth used, the more power is needed to transmit the information. Uh, full AM uses both upper and lower sidebands and occupies approximately 6 kHz of bandwidth. Single sideband, on the other hand, uses only 3 kHz. Uh, accordingly, it will travel much farther given the same power. For the exam, know that single sideband is a form of amplitude modulation. As you recall from previous lessons, frequency modulation is less susceptible to uh, interference. Uh, this makes it more suitable for data transmission. Less interference equates to uh, lesser need for error correction and leads to faster transmission rates. For the exam, understand that FM is a type of modulation most commonly used for VHF packet radio transmissions. Because of the uh, lower power requirements of single sideband, it's actually preferred for weak signal uh, transmissions, even on VHF. Uh, this slide shows that uh, you can get a great distance using as little as uh, 10 milliwatts. Uh, for the exam, know that single sideband is a type of voice mode most often used for long distance or weak signal contacts on VHF and UHF bands. Because frequency modulation is low in noise and it's simple to operate and the equipment is fairly low cost, uh, it's commonly used uh, for VHF and UHF uh, repeaters. Uh, so for the exam, know that FM is a type of modulation uh, that is most commonly used for VHF and UHF voice repeaters. As you can see by this illustration, the the CW or Morse code bandwidth is uh, 150 hertz uh, compared to uh, 2400 hertz for voice, so it's substantially narrower. Uh, so for the exam, know that CW is a type of emission uh, that has the narrowest bandwidth. As a general rule, uh, lower sideband is uh, 9 megahertz and below, or below 9 megahertz, and upper sideband is uh, 9 megahertz and above, uh, which starts out around the 30 meter band. 
Uh, so for the exam, know that upper sideband is normally used for 10 meter HF, VHF, and UHF single sideband communications. As we alluded to earlier, uh, single sideband requires less power uh, because of its narrower bandwidth. Uh, so the advantage of uh, single sideband over FM for voice transmission is single sidebands have narrower bandwidth. For, you need, uh, for the exam, you need to know that uh, 3 kilohertz is the approximate bandwidth of a single sideband voice. You need to know that uh, between 10 and 15 kilohertz is the approximate bandwidth of a VHF repeater FM phone signal. You need to know that about 6 megahertz is a typical bandwidth for analog fast scan TV transmissions on the 70 centimeter band. And again, for the uh, exam, you need to know that 150 hertz is the approximate maximum bandwidth required to transmit a CW signal or Morse code. Next up is uh, amateur satellite operation. We're going to be talking about Doppler shift, uh, basic orbits, uh, operating protocols, uh, transmitter power considerations, telemetry and telecommand, and satellite tracking. Since it's not uh, convenient to just pop by and inspect a satellite in orbit, uh, you know, we, uh, they're designed to uh, translate or transmit the uh, information with telemetry. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that the health and status of a satellite uh, is telemetry Im uh, information that is uh, typically transmitted by satellite beacons. Uh, because satellites are open for everyone, uh, we need to be good citizens and uh, not overpower somebody else's signal. Uh, so therefore, we use uh, the minimum amount necessary. Uh, so for the exam, know that blocking access by other users is the impact of using too much effective radiated power on a satellite uplink. There are many programs that uh, are used for tracking satellites. My uh, favorite is open source uh, gpredict uh, by OZ9AEC. Um, so know for the exam that the following information is provided by satellite tracking programs. Uh, maps showing real-time position of satellite track over the earth, the time azimuth elevation, start, maximum altitude, and end of pass, and the apparent frequency of satellite transmission including the effects of Doppler shift. And with amateur satellites, there's uh, various modes that uh, uh, we can operate on. Uh, there's single sideband, uh, FM, uh, Morse code, and data, uh, which uh, for the exam, you just need to know that uh, S, uh, SB, FM, CW, and uh, data are modes of transmissions uh, that are commonly used uh, by amateur radio satellites. And as we spoke about telemetry before, <clears throat> for the exam you need to know that uh, transmission from a satellite that contains status information is a satellite beacon. Uh, this slide uh, shows uh, what the uh, Kepler elements look like. Uh, it's basically just a set of coordinates uh, which enable uh, you to, uh, or your satellite tracking program to find a satellite in uh, space, a three-dimensional space. So for the exam, know that uh, the Kepler elements are inputs to a satellite tracking program. Uh, in this slide, uh, uh, CO6CBF uh, is uh, shown with a FOX1 satellite. This is called a CubeSat. Uh, and Cube satellites are just like that, uh, the name implies that they're made out of a cube. And they're quite small, uh, they're quite light, uh, and this is uh, because it costs a lot of money to put up 
uh, satellites. They charge by the gram. Many of us have sat at a train track and listened to a train go by and uh, there's a higher pitch sound when it's approaching and it's lower when it's uh, after it's passed. Uh, so for the exam, know that with regarding satellite communications, a Doppler shift is observed, uh, an observed uh, change in signal frequency caused by the relative motion between the satellite and the Earth station. It's important to know what modes uh, the, uh, the satellites are operating in. Um, so the mode is uh, equals uh, uplink over downlink. So U stands for UHF and V stands for VHF. So uh, the uh, uh, U slash V would be uh, UHF uplink and a VHF downlink. So for the exam, know that the satellite uplink is in the 70 centimeter band and the downlink is in the 2 meter band is what is meant by the statement that a satellite is operating in a UV mode. Uh, because of cost constraints and uh, many other factors, uh, amateur satellites typically don't have any stabilization, uh, you know, retro rockets to keep them uh, stable in space, so they tend to rotate. Um, so note for the exam that rotation of a satellite and its antennas is what causes the spin fading of a satellite signal. And there are many types of orbits that uh, satellites tend to end up in. Uh, however, most typically a low Earth orbit or LEO or LEO uh, is where um, amateur radio uh, satellites end up because of the cost to get them to a particular orbit. So for the exam, just know that the initials LEO tell you that the satellite is in low Earth orbit. What you just heard was the telemetry from uh, the famous Sputnik uh, satellite, the first uh, satellite ever put in space. Uh, for the exam, just know that anyone who can receive the telemetry signal may receive telemetry from a space station. And to prevent uh, overpowering anybody, as we discussed earlier, uh, a good idea is to check your uh, signal strength meter uh, so that the downlink uh, and the uplink should be about the same amount of power. Uh, so for the exam, just know that checking your signal strength on the downlink should be about the same as uh, the beacon. is a good way to judge whether your uplink power is neither too low or too high. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Be sure to click on the red button below if, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. Until next time, never stop learning.